bon way. You look so much better. You look so much better. Hey, hey, hey. You don't want to eat your basket. <laughs> she is loving these herbs. I've been giving her different herbs around our homestead. Healing herbs, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and uh, she has been gobbling them up. But it's funny, once she's had enough of one, she'll stop eating it. So I don't give her that much. But she has been loving these. And as you can tell, the herbs with the homeopathy that I've been using on her, it has made her swelling go down tremendously. It's hard to notice even today, but yesterday her hole, it was swollen all the way down to her waddle. This just goes to show you the power of herbs and the power of homeopathic medicine. So you may be wondering what exactly have I given her? Well, as far as the herbal stuff, plantain that we've talked about has so many good healing benefits. Plant, and it draws out toxins as well. So we have plantain and comfrey. Comfrey's another good one. Um, I don't have it right here, but yesterday I was giving her some yarrow and a little bit of echinacea. Um, white pine as well for vitamin C. Just all good immunity boosting herbs. For humans and I figured they'd be good for goats too so all of these things I've been giving her and this has gone down so much I also put my salve on there that I've made plantain and comfrey so we're working from the inside and the outside on the homeopathic side I have been giving her aconite and merc soul merc soul is for infection and aconite is good for whole host of things but especially things that come on quick and that's what that I'm, I'm assuming it's an abscess was doing it came on really quick Monday morning it was not there and then Monday evening I mean it was really visible and then even later into that evening it, it kept getting bigger and bigger and then yesterday morning it was like really swollen all around her neck so I'm curious to see what the vet says and uh, see what she'll say with how I've treated it so far. Can't get it out of that other tree. I think they appreciate you doing this, Sayla. Yeah. One time I put one down and Helga went like this and she stood and she just walked and just started eating. <laughs> I'm just amazed still at how much her neck has gone down right there. It's been going down really quick, hasn't it? Yep. I shouldn't be so surprised at how well this works, but I am. I'm continually surprised and amazed at how well homeopathy and herbs work, and even in conjunction together. So again, I'm excited to see what the vet says and get her take on it. So we'll see. Well, I'm gonna let Sayla stay out here and play with the goats a little more and feed them treats. And uh, I have to get back inside and get some more work done. Olga and Helga. I like it. Ah, so. Olga, right here. Olga, good. 
it for Sea Hill, whatever it is. Yeah, well, it's a good location for Sea Hill. Okay. I know. It's a nice lady. But it was swollen all the way down. And that greasy stuff is I put a comfrey and plantain to have on her. Well, it's right in the location of a lymph node. So it's, I can't rule out seal. Yeah. Um, it's not over her teeth, so I don't think it's a tooth problem. I know, I know. No, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your color's good. Um, I can't rule out CL just because it's right there yeah. where lymph nodes sit. Um, how, how old is she? I don't know how old it I'll is have to she was. Our friend's remember. coming tomorrow that we got her from. Yeah. Okay. I know she's she's at least, is she at least four. But they never mentioned her having a problem. No. no. And I can ask them. I haven't sent them because I didn't want to be like back and forth about Did, it. Have they interact? I, I'm hesitant to try to cut into that if it's an abscess if it is CL especially since you have other yes yeah. yeah um so I think that's probably our best bet and if that comes back negative and it's still present still growing we can't get it to go away we could possibly shoot an x-ray of it make sure it's not tooth related okay. um, unfortunately since it's so far back I can't really get my hand in there yeah. to see if there's anything with her teeth but um because it's so far back I highly doubt it's tooth related but I think that's probably our best bet would be to just test for CL, hope see. it comes back negative and it goes away on its own. If it still is present and the test is negative, we can do other sort of tests. Now, how it's gone down a lot, does that mean anything at all? Well, CL is abscesses. Okay. And so if you treat them like any abscess, you know, put warm compress, that kind of thing, you could, you could make it smaller. Okay. But again, I, I, I can't say for certain, but the location is very suspicious. So okay. before we do anything else, I think we need to rule that out. Okay, make sure. Because if yeah. we cut it open or anything, it, it exposes all of your other goats to yeah, it. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. Monday morning, totally not noticeable. And then Monday afternoon, I'm like, wait yeah. a minute. And then even from, I think I saw it around 4.30, and even by eight o'clock, it had gotten bigger. Okay. Well, that that is odd. That's not really classic for CL, but again, just, the location is so that's what i've been reading picture so, perfect like, for it that i think ruling that out is probably and it even feels like a lymph node yeah like you can grab it and it has some shape to it yeah. and so i think ruling that out is the number one priority and then if it's still present keep doing what you're doing because clearly it's having an effect but um let's i was so excited i was like yeah, yeah it's going down but i think ruling that out is our number one priority uh, how does she look overall just for her breed and everything because I mean I like I said I don't know a ton about goats yeah we're yeah. learning <laughs> um did she Olga. kid recently or I think yeah. Helga is her last one okay so yeah. it's been a while yeah. yeah okay um she looks pretty good she's a little sunken in okay um but sometimes as they get older everything will kind of drop Okay. And they lose a little bit of muscle there across the top. Gotcha. She's so big everywhere else, I'd hate to say. Put a bunch of weight on her. Yeah. But I do give her a little bit of grain at every that's day, okay. but that's not. A so little bit, a little bit of grain's okay, especially for the girls. It's the boys that she worries yeah. about grain with. I know that. So, but. So, but I mean, I'd say she's a little sunken in. Um, is she, we don't have a ton of grass. No, and we're getting, we need to buy more hay. There, it was like a lot more brushy that they've like beat it okay. down. I and, say, I, and I also cut stuff down and bring it to them like yeah, different we'll branches. Yeah, we'll off and everything. Well, these guys are designed for forage. So yeah. grass and hay, they need to have it 24 seven. Okay. Um, so that might just be what you're seeing there is. Okay. Her rumen's not full. Gotcha. She doesn't have a ton in there. So she just needs to okay. forage more. Okay. <laughs> well she is she like you said she's a dairy goat so she's always gonna look a little hippie she uh she could gain some more weight but mm. if you said she's gaining mm -hmm, she well is. and she's given like a is quart off? of milk yes yeah. yes yeah, all like a quart of milk in the morning hey basil. Yeah, look try come here come here basil hey buddy come here she's the drama queen well you're a newbie <laughs> Her color's good. 
so I don't think it's a parasite problem. Um, if she's gaining weight, I would just keep. And, I figured she, I and, and she's milking still. I, yeah. you know, as much food as she wants. Yeah. She's on the skinnier side, but I wouldn't say she's. Too skinny. Anor yeah, anorexic, okay. emaciated, that kind of thing. She is definitely skinny, but if she's actively gaining weight while still milking, I think that's um, good. Okay. I think once you stop milking her, the weight will come on a lot faster. Mm -hmm. You guys are cute. They're a man. Now, do you suggest us keeping them away from the other ones right now since we're kind of not sure what's going on? I would. Okay. Let's wait and make sure they're, that's negative. Okay. Otherwise, you put them at risk. And they could, I mean, if these positive and they were interacted before, they ev did. Everybody could technically be positive. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you have one positive, we could check everybody to be sure. Yeah. I plenty of people maintain herds on positive basis. They just know, and if they're going to be selling, they have to advertise. Yeah. Um, okay. But if they're just going to be pets, you know. Now with CL, if we were raising them for meat goats mm -hmm. in the future, is that any way going to affect the meat? It should later affect on? the meat itself. Um, usually, if they have CL and producers continue to use them. Um, it just kind of, it makes them maybe a little bit more poor doing. Gotcha. So they might not get as much from them. Gotcha. Um, and it kind of also depends too on, you know, if he only gets one abscess every, if she only gets one abscess every now and then, that's not that bad. If they get them all over the place, yeah. then you're probably going to start having some, yeah. some affect the meat quality. But so a lot of times producers will just cull them. Cold. That's what I've read, so I just wanted so, to... There, there are people out there that will maintain positive herds, but um, we do have some clients with pet goats that ended up positive, and they just know, yeah. and they won't get any new goats until that one dies. Gotcha. But. So that's pretty encouraging to hear that, that Hazel and Basil are looking pretty good, and uh, it looks like Hazel is not super thin after all. So, uh, but I do want to thank you all who have commented and I uh, do try to do so encouragingly and uh, expressing your love and concern, different things. All right, so I gotta get blood from her neck. Hi. You need my help? <laughs> well, it was like perfect right there at the beginning and then it just slid away from me. Hypothetically speaking, if she does come back, that does come back that she has it, mm -hmm. does that mean, we, and say if they don't have it, never bring goats in this area again or? I, I would not bring any while you still have her. Okay, okay. So. I wasn't sure if it's something that could go into the ground or. It doesn't live that long. Okay. So. Because okay. like I said, it's the pus usually is what's make is what's spreading it. Ah. So once you get rid of that, okay, um, that's better. So you said it doesn't live that long, so it would travel by bugs, flies, things like that. Yeah. So like if if an animal on a neighboring farm had a wound, had one that busted open, flies got in it, and brought it over here, um, but it would have to get into her somehow. So if she had like an open, cut. if she had a cut. <laughs> That's you know I mean. that kind of thing gotcha um but i've also read that it lives in the soil people are saying like years well yes and no i i just like, i mean i would rather know like what is on the the more regular I would say, side of things instead of like the rare occasion i would tell people to rest their pasture like we had one client that had a bunch and i think we told them rest your pasture like don't bring any more mm -hmm. goats in rest your pasture i think we told them for a couple months just to be on the safe okay. side exactly. luckily we're at the hottest time of year so It'll kill it. Things will die much faster. Well, that was encouraging, yet at the same time, a little bit sobering, knowing that we need to pray that hopefully everything's okay. Yeah. She doesn't have the CL. Yeah. Uh, but we're following her instructions, Katie's instructions, and separating and going to keep separate Hazel and Basil in the meantime. And uh, I guess we'll go from there. 
Yeah, one thing that was super encouraging to me was she was just like, you know, whatever you're doing is working, so keep on doing it. Yeah, and it's been nice to see that uh, I've been using homeopathy and different things naturally myself, but to see it working on livestock and our animals is pretty neat too. Yeah, so between the homeopathy and the herbs that I've been growing in my apothecary garden, um, and giving her those, and just to see it just go down, I mean, sometimes within hours there's a difference there was a dec decrease in size so that is super encouraging for me yeah. but please keep it in your prayers that it's not cl and hopefully it's not yeah and also it was really nice to hear her talk about hazel and that she's not super skinny and that she looks good and whenever you know she's not in milk she'll put more weight on faster but she has been putting on weight so yeah. we're heading in the right direction yeah i can tell from my farm fit exercise and pick, picking her <laughs> up that she's gaining weight or either she's gaining weight or i'm getting weaker <laughs> and she's producing more milk yeah, so that's so always good. a good sign too that yeah, sure is well i'm going to be doing some limb work and taking some things down to give to helga and olga to munch on so I'm gonna get started. We're gonna make a remedy for Olga. So I had to get my remedy kit. I'm gonna get Aconite 200. And we've used it a lot because <laughs> it's a very frequent one to use. And we're going to take our clean jar and put four or five pellets down in there just like that so aconite is good for something that comes on really fast Nicholas Silvis like that you're back and then we have Merc Soul it is great for infection and we're going to add this in as well so do five pellets of that an extra one. Put those in there. Then we're going to add what? some, yes, yeah, some warm water. It looks like it says Mercobis Solbis. <laughs> These are like Latin names, but it's known Mercurius. So I can't even say the last one, but people call it Merc Soul. That's what it's known for for short. <laughs> this is what we're using. So once you have, and what we're doing is we're making a, uh, a water dose for Olga because in order, the way you take remedies is you put them under your tongue for them to dissolve, right? Well, just imagine how hard it would be to get a goat to put this under her tongue and let it dissolve. <laughs> So we're dissolving our pellets into water and then we're going to shake it up. Yeah. And we're just going to keep shaking and letting it, letting it all go together. And shaking it is called succussion. But it's just making sure that all the medicine in there gets distributed throughout the, all the water. Now you normally don't do remedies like this. Like I said, but you can do it like this, and um, these are good for like a day. Mm. After a day, they're pretty much they don't have they're not as effective, I don't think. <laughs> or that's what they say. I haven't experimented with it. Hey, girl. So I gathered them some more comfrey and plantain, mainly for Olga, but I think Helga is getting in on the action here too. What? A little bit for you too. Now, the fun part, <laughs> getting her to drink this. Okay, come here. She doesn't necessarily enjoy me <laughs> getting her to take this because it's almost like horse feeding. 
So earlier today, the first time I gave it to her, she actually drank from the jar. I don't know if she'll do that again, maybe. Uh-oh. A little bit more. That's good. I want her to drink some more, though. So, here you go. Come on. Come on. See, she don't necessarily want to drink as much as I want her to. So, this <laughs> always an interesting process here. Well, there we go. We at least got a third into her. And I'll keep this and um, use it again for the evening because I've been dosing her three times a day, at least three times a day. Normally, I'm trying to do every three hours, but at least three times a day with um, her remedy. I've also been putting some salve on the outside, which I just put it in here and I just rub it in. <laughs> I love you too, Olga. <laughs> Quit licking me. No, no, no. I want to make sure it's all rubbed in good. Well, I think she has had about all that she wants of me right now. If you, when you look directly at her, you can ba barely tell she has the spot. She looks so much better. Like, I can tell where it's swollen, but it's gone down so much since Monday evening, especially Tuesday morning. It just continues to go down. So as I'm learning about permaculture and forestry, permaculture forestry, and, and just how to better manage the environment, there's certain things that stand out to me, especially just observing and, and seeing what things need to grow and, and to flourish and to develop. And uh, one of the things is with, with trees, you have clusters like these, where these trees won't fully develop because they're just so crowded. They're, they're like living in this super tight, urbanized area where they can't really branch out and grow to be the trees that they need to be so we need to we need to space it out we need to make sure that they have the space that they need so they can be healthy as he healthy as they can be so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this one here get rid of that one there and then that way it will allow this one to grow but also with this one instead of just cutting it way way down i'm going to cut it down and, and that way the goats will be able to munch on these leaves right up here but also cutting it somewhere right in here will stress it it won't kill it but it will stress it to the point where it starts shooting off a multiple new shoots so that way we can harvest those shoots next year it could be used for the goats as well as for uh for firewood it really works well in like something like a, a rocket stove or something like that so that's what i'm gonna do
Alrighty, now that we have those cleaned up, you can see here what remains. Just this one, we got rid of the other ones. You can still cut them all the way down low. They should be out of the way. But that gives a nice space in between this pine tree here and this one to shoot up and have sprouts shooting off for next year. And uh, while I'm here, also notice this tree right here, it's dead. We'll go ahead and get this down. But it's neat to think about as we're working on the environment in unison with our animals to create a healthier environment at the same time hopefully helping the animals to be healthier too as well as ourselves so it's just a a huge synergistic relationship it's done well and hopefully we're going to try to do the best we can well i'm going to go ahead and get this down we'll see you next time i'm going to try to use a little bit of muscle Let's see if i can just push it right down